Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having an incredible day. Likes, comments, and subscriptions are always very much appreciated as they do help out the channel immensely. My podcast is now also on Spotify. There is a link in the description below. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. There's a lot of weird, odd, off-the-cuff, I don't know if that's the correct term for it, uh, news. It says, Ether's price spikes by almost 7% amidst Ethereum's Bellatrix upgrade, which happened yesterday. Bellatrix is the last upgrade in the long line of upgrades that we've had over the last two years that we've constantly spoken about that have to do uh, with Ethereum's merge, which apparently, for those of you who missed yesterday's video, is going to be happening either between now the 13th or the 15th of September. Ethereum is producing a large number of blocks. The network is speeding up in that aspect, if you want to say it that way. And uh, yeah, the block that the upgrade is written on is moving closer than we had expected, so we might be getting it a few days earlier. On the news that Ethereum had received its final upgrade, known as Bellatrix, I think there's also Paris, but that's also something else that's happening. Uh, Ethereum's price moved up. The rest of the cryptocurrency market moved up at the exact same time. So the discussion today is, which is kind of like the most popular uh, news story uh, floating around, is why did the cryptocurrency market go down? So one part is accurate and the other part is my speculation. My speculation has to do with the fact that, hear me out here, I've been in this market for a very long time. I remember when Ethereum came to be. I remember when Ethereum was 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 cents, and people told me not to buy it because it was a scam coin. Wonderful. I wish I had a time machine to backhand those people. What we've seen historically is that a lot of times, nearly all the times, is if Ethereum in particular, is doing too well, Bitcoin tends to fall heavily, and Ethereum then has to follow suit. I'm not sure why this happens. My speculation for some time has been, as Bitcoin kind of controls the market and the flow of the market, of course, you can have other times where altcoins, and for those of you who are confused, people, I'm, I, I don't, okay, people were asking me before, what is an altcoin? An altcoin is any other coin that's not Bitcoin, any other coin. They are known as alternative coins. They are alternatives to Bitcoin. That's the idea of an altcoin. So I assume we have some uh, relatively new people here. If Ethereum became the number one coin, it is still an altcoin. It is the alternative to Bitcoin, which would then be the number two coin. Just to clarify that. Over the years, uh, many, many times, Ethereum has become quite popular and became the number two coin. There were times when XRP flipped it and XRP became the number two coin. It's happened before, but Ethereum 99% of the time has remained the number two to coin as this number two space has solidified number of cryptocurrency exchanges have tied other coins to it before around 2017 somewhere around there every coin was just tied to bitcoin there were no stable coins there were there wasn't anything else it was just your coin was tied to bitcoin if altcoins were having a bad day all of their money would flow into bitcoin and pick and bitcoin Bitcoin's price would spike by 28%. That's when we had that insane volatility. But as we have stable coins and also Ethereum to kind of take some of the weight off of the movement of the market, that's currently where we are. So I made a little slight joke yesterday, but I wasn't expecting it to happen. Uh, yesterday, the prices of the market were beginning to move up. And I was like, hey, <laughs> you know what usually happens when Bitcoin is going sideways and Ethereum begins to go up on its own because of the, the rest of the market began to rally as well. I was like, Bitcoin usually falls. And it's usually people who are trading Bitcoin uh, for some odd reason who will not let the market move on its own and they began to sell off. So that's the other 50% of why I believe prices fell and I say it out loud simply because I've seen it happen so many other times before, and it's generally always the same. So uh, what went wrong? Nothing. Uh, Bitcoin's price uh, simply fell, 
And, I, and if you've been here the last 15, 25 other videos, you also know what's coming. But I'm also going to explain that as well regarding Bitcoin's price. It says Bitcoin takes a major hit. Technical analysis, Ethereum nose dives. why $1,500 is the key for more losses. No one knows what the key for anything is. Because we've heard so many numbers. We were hearing just about three or four weeks ago that analysts were predicting within five days after that, that Ethereum was going to go back to 800 and Bitcoin was going back down to $12,000. What? Those numbers didn't come true. That's crazy. How did they not know that and keep lying to their followers? I don't understand. It says Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Cardano plummet. Why is crypto crashing today? Once again, if you've been here the last couple of weeks, you know exactly why. Stocks are falling. That's also very... I don't know why they chose that particular image. It's a very creepy like Joker-like image. It says stock futures lower after another day of losses amid a surge in treasury yields. The stock market yesterday opened okayly. Not a word, but you understand what I'm saying. Things looked like they were going to be good. There were tons of news floating around talking about that stocks were edging higher as people returned back to their desks because I think yesterday was Labor Day in the United States. A lot of people were home and therefore the stock market took a break as well. People went back to their desks and started trading and then prices began to fall once again. And that also coincides and with the fact that the cryptocurrency market was also falling. However, I don't know if they have the numbers somewhere around here. It's not on this one. Uh, the stock markets... At least the S&P 500, Dow Jones, and the NASDAQ fell, but it was like half a percent. And this is based off of the continued fear uh, that a lot of people are vocally announcing now that has to do with the fact that the Federal Reserve has announced a couple of days ago that they are still looking hawkishly at the market and they're going to do whatever they can to make sure that they uh, erase their mistakes from the past, which is now destroying the world's economy. And based off of that news... And no other news that they do not plan on raising interest rates. The stock market uh, continued to fall. We're also seeing a, a strengthening dollar. I think the euro is now like far below or relatively below the US dollar when historically since around like 2002 or 2003, the euro has been stronger than the dollar. But this mainly has to do with what I was telling all of you before, uh, a, a number of crumbling uh, economies and they're kind of forced to use the de facto US dollar. So part of the issue is, is that relatively so, we have seen that as the stock market falls. And, and I, if you happen to know somebody, no, never mind. I was going to make a, a really weird joke, but it's also kind of not a joke. I was basically going to say, like, I want to know exactly who the people are who are trading Bitcoin correlated with the stock market. Because I really would love an explanation as to why they keep doing this. Or as to why, no, that's basically... The entire point of it. Anyway, um, at the moment, um, Indian and some Asian stock markets are actually going a bit higher, but it's still like sideways up. Sometimes how we talk about Bitcoin's price, they're in the green, but like by half of a percent. Everyone's waiting for the U.S. stock market to open up. A lot of people are saying that they might be potentially bullish on the U.S. stock market simply because I believe this is the third or fourth week of losses historically, even during like a huge downturn from a stock market crash, we tend to see some kind of a relief rally along the way. But um, here's my opinion. I don't think we're going to be seeing any relief anything. I had stupidly hoped that the cryptocurrency market would, you know, like in like in the long, long ago, like 2020, 2019, 2018, uh, would be moving by itself in some form or fashion that we would get news that an upgrade Four multiple coins were taking place, that is to say Ethereum and Cardano, and those prices would simply be moving up by themselves. Um, I saw so many articles talking about like where Cardano was going to go, or were we going to see a 2 or $3 Cardano by the end of this year? And I'm like, no, probably not. It's because we are all, we have to wait for what the Federal Reserve says. There's one person, it, it, is, it is estimated that we are near 8 billion people on this planet. Think about that. We have to wait for one person to stand at a podium to tell us, no, I'm not going to raise numbers on a screen as much as I did last month for the world's economy to recover. I want you to all take that to heart and really understand how stupid the current system is. Like really, really understand. 
We're waiting for one person to tell us that they're not going to raise numbers on a screen for the world's economy to begin to tick back up. So uh, we'll see what ends up happening. I've kind of, I'll be honest with you, I've kind of lost all hope for any kind of significant rally. This isn't the uh, despair phase of the bear market because I still don't think that we're actually in a bear market. We're in this extended down course of all markets because of the Fed. Because if the Fed announced tomorrow, we're no longer ever raising interest rates again, every single market in the cryptocurrency market would move back up. The cryptocurrency market does not move up during a bear market on good news. <laughs> Believe me, I've seen that multiple, multiple times before. That's all the price news, at least that we have right now. Prices went up. Uh, Bitcoin slammed down the heaviest. Uh, everything else moved accordingly down. The stock market began to fall, and this is where we currently are. Yeah, that's why prices are down today. And yeah, uh, let's move on. And for some reason, this was also popular news. The ex-president of Brazil Central Bank, Enrique Mairelles, okay, became the newest member of Binance's advisory board. Despite the ongoing bear market of the, never mind, the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange, Binance, continues to expand its team. Enrique Mairelles, who served as Brazilian Central Bank president and economy minister of the country, reportedly joined the platform as an advisor. Contrary to Binance, which went on a hiring spree during the crypto winter, many of its rivals dismissed a chunk of their staff in the few past months, such as Crypto, the website Crypto, Coinbase, Bybit, Gemini, and others. For those, yeah, that was a really interesting day. And I mean, it just kind of makes a lot of sense. A couple of months ago, there were tons of cryptocurrency websites, exchanges, places who were all announcing that they were going to be uh, letting go a huge portion of their staff. And Binance was like, we're actually hiring like 500 people. And it was basically because they were like, oh, you know, when, when prices were rising, we were stashing away money in anticipation of prices dropping. It's called the rainy day fund. So while prices are down, we can actually hire people. And here we are. Anyway, um, this was major news because I, I think people... Don't look back at history or don't, I don't know, I, I, I can't put it really into words. Um, this isn't something that is fairly new. We have seen this multiple times before from multiple other companies. I, I think it's because they were the former economic minister that it makes big news. Uh, if you look at Ripple's board of advisory, it's basically former SEC CFTC and like, I think some World Bank members and stuff like that. Like everyone, when you are choosing for your advisory board, you tend to choose people uh, who are very powerful in some sort of way so that they know other powerful people so that they can talk to them should you need in a certain situation, especially with Binance, air quotes, getting in trouble by world leaders for not having a literal physical location on a street because we live in the 1930s. Uh, of course, they would be hiring very powerful people who know other powerful people because that's who you put on your advisory board. You don't put random people. Like a lot of times we get news that like uh, Coinbase or Kraken or Ripple or any other company is hiring people from like Google or from like other World Bank positions. And it's like, oh, well, that makes a lot of sense because, you know, money, but it ends up making the news and they're like, how are they doing this? The markets are down. They're hiring people. Anyway, that's the, yeah, Binance is in the news every single day. Their expansion is ridiculous. I don't understand how anyone else could even think about trying to keep up with them at this point. Yeah, kind of crazy, right? That's the Binance news. And yeah, let's move on. I actually rolled my eyes 15 times looking at this. Uh, someone named Jeremy Hogan, an XRP advocate and U.S. legal counsel, said that he believes that the lawsuit between the SEC and Ripple could be wrapping up very soon. Responding to a user on social media, 
Hogan noted that the lawsuit could be resolved as early as this month. And I, in a way, I, I felt it. Someone else out there also just rolled their eyes. As both sides have already laid out their cases, making it more likely of a time frame to reach an agreement. You know why I rolled my eyes? Because this was quite popular news. I get it. Everyone's a little bit exhausted, not only with the, the lawsuit against Ripple, but with the SEC in general. I'm tired of saying those letters. I'm tired of those people. I'm tired of the, like, the blatant corruption that we keep seeing over and over and over from them. Uh, basically, somebody was talking about like, hey, wouldn't it make a lot more sense if the SEC just simply uh, told everyone what was and was not a security? And he was like, yeah, of course, that makes tons of sense. But the SEC is absolutely terrible. So the reason I rolled my eyes is because for those of you, if you remember March, anybody, anybody, March this year, in March this year, that is to say the third month, uh, we got news that apparently in April, the lawsuit would be done. Yeah. And everyone was like, finally, it's taken, it's been two years of absolute nonsense. Of course, of course, it's going away. And then April came and went and we got nothing. And then we got news around May that June was going to be the time frame for it to be done. And everyone was like, finally, it's taking forever. And then June came and went and we heard nothing. And we keep hearing little bits of news that apparently Ripple is uh, winning portions of their lawsuit because the SEC, for the, oh my gosh, they're t terrible people. For those of you who missed that, uh, Ripple sent them a, a question to the SEC basically saying, hey, can you tell us ex exactly why you believe XRP is a security or why you're, you're doing this to us in general? It took the SEC four days to send back a letter with the letters and no on it. Four days. That's one, two, three, four. Right, so the popular news surrounding this today is that apparently it could be settled this month. I have no hopes. I have, a, and we had news that the, the the team from Ripple has already spent one hundred million dollars in legal fees. Yep, that's a real number, one hundred million dollars. So I assume the SEC is going to try and drag this out as long as possible because they know that they're wrong. They know that what they're doing is completely incorrect. There's a reason why we we now see within the U.S. Uh, bipartisan support uh, for the CFTC uh, to take over as opposed to the SEC because these people are completely out of their minds. Uh, so, yeah, this was quite popular news. XRP people are at least talking about it. It would be nice. I mean, for everyone, because we would see the price of XRP at least go back up or be able to move in tandem with other coins. But... Silver lining is that after all this time, two years of a lawsuit, XRP is still in the top 10. So that's still something because we could be coin number 97 right now. Still going strong. All right. That's the Ripple XRP lawsuit could potentially be settled this month news. Sure. Why not? Let's move on. Uh, in news that's supposed to scare you, but it never ever should, the last couple of days I haven't uh, had this news in the news, uh, simply because I think it's just quite ridiculous. Uh, I think a lot of people should be like actually ashamed of themselves as they're trying to scare other people within the cryptocurrency market, but I assume that these people literally have no shame within them and this is why they do what they do. There's been a number of uh, news articles floating around trying to explain, except for actual reality, trying to explain uh, why Bitcoin's price is dropping. One of the key metrics from years ago, before Bitcoin's market cap was in the hundreds of billions, and I mean like we are talking about a, a three, four, five, six, seven billion dollar market cap. So it's fairly lower compared to where we are today. Uh, basically... Every time that we so we, we, we began to accumulate the addresses of people who were mining Bitcoin and we could see when they were holding said coins or when they were selling them off. The idea was a couple of things. If someone is mining tons of Bitcoin and, and, and I mean like an industrial, huge, gigantic operation, if they're mining Bitcoin and they have to sell off their Bitcoin, the idea is usually one of two things. Uh, Bitcoin's price is either far too low 
So they're shutting off their machines and they're not making a profit and therefore they have to sell some of their Bitcoin to recoup some of the losses. Or what's the other one? What's the other scenario when they would sell? Oh, basically they have to like pay for electricity and stuff like that. You know, their their normal costs that are generated uh, as they're doing this. If Bitcoin's hash rate does a 10x and they have to produce, you know, they have more machines and they're using a lot more electricity than previously assumed, they're going to have to sell off a lot of Bitcoin. It, it's just completely logical. They do have costs that they also have to sell off every single month. However, the last month or so within this space has been news that's been trying to scare people to basically tell them because years ago, and once again, with a much lower market cap, if we got news that someone was selling off a huge amount of Bitcoin, that was new Bitcoin that was going to hit the market. This new Bitcoin, as we had buyers, but it wasn't like a gigantic amount of buyers, might have moved the price down. They simply, on nothing else but the news that someone was selling, someone who was mining Bitcoin was putting their Bitcoin back onto the market, if you will. Bitcoin's price would actually fall lower. It's stupid fear that we had a long time ago and people, it's the same exact thing whenever, this is why a lot of times I don't really care for the uh, the whale watch news. The idea of, of whale watch, if someone's buying the coins, sure. But the other side of the whale watch news is to kind of make people more terrified. The idea being, for those of you who missed it last week or the week before, was that uh, someone, he, now he, here we go, someone who had 5,000 Bitcoin moved their Bitcoin to another wallet. And every news article was talking about how terrible this was for the cryptocurrency market because what if they sold off their 5,000 Bitcoin? If we are in a market where someone cannot move their money or sell off their own Bitcoin, something's terribly wrong with this market. The point is, you're supposed to be able to move money around how you see fit at any given time, no matter when. So... We got news that uh, U.S. crypto miner Core Scientific uh, sold 1,100 Bitcoin in August. For those of you not looking at the screen, that is only, and I'm saying only relative to the other trillions that we talk about in this market, is only $26 million. This news is floating around talking about that's a huge amount of Bitcoin. Why are they selling? Should we be afraid? Our price is going lower. One of the most popular news stories of the day. But th this has also once again been mimicked the last couple of weeks at this point. Anytime that someone's moving around Bitcoin, there was also news the other day that I, I think, uh, I think what was it 30, 40 million dollars worth of Bitcoin had moved into a cryptocurrency exchange and they were like, are they selling? Sure, why not let them sell? If, if, if they want to go back into euros or yen or the US dollar or the Canadian dollar or, or the peso... Sure, it's 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 their money. Why 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 try to obsess over it, or why try to get other people terrified? Can you imagine if we lived in a world where you can't move your own money on a blockchain, or every time you do, like imagine Bitcoin goes up super high. Like imagine you know we're in twenty forty two, we're all wearing VR, AR, ABC headsets, and we're floating on metaverses and stuff like that. And at some point, because Bitcoin has gone so high. You decide to sell $26 million worth because you want to buy a new island. Sure, why not? But then the market panics and people start talking about the price going down. Yeah, see, it, yeah, 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 kind of stupid. Anyway, so cool. I ho hope they sell more Bitcoin. That's less Bitcoin for them in the future and more for everyone else to be able to buy. I don't mind the redistribution. P part of my problem already is, is that these mega corporations and organizations are holding a huge portion of the Bitcoin. If we can redistribute that to all of you out there, and that you can also have fractions of Bitcoin or an entire Bitcoin, doesn't that seem a little bit nicer? Anyway, that's the, they sold $26 million worth of Bitcoin. Oof, really breaking the bank. News. All right, let's move on. I told you it was going to be a very weird news day. I wasn't lying to you. It's just kind of all over the place. Um, it says Shiba Inu discount bought uh, a top whale has scooped up 656 billion with a B Shiba Inu in multiple transactions. This happens all the time. Uh, there are like four wallets. So like there are multiple people buying Shiba Inu. Gotcha. However, there are four wallets uh, that are huge holders of Ethereum 
who are also buying gigantic portions of Shiba Inu. Uh, and there was one particular wallet that bought a huge portion of the amount of Shibu, <laughs> Shibu Inu. Shiba Inu that's actually out there. So, wonderful. This also made popular. I, t I, I told you, I told you, I told you. It was going to be a very weird news day. I don't know why. What's today? Wednesday? I don't know. Maybe it's because we're in the middle of the week. I'm not really sure exactly what it is. But sure. Yeah. Um, somebody bought tons of Shiba Inu. Yeah. Oh, uh, Charles Hoskinson was also in the news once again. And um, I'm not going to go over it. But, you know. Right. Also in the news. And I saw this. And I'm just... If you can if you can go outside and go for a walk, do it. If you have a treadmill and you can like put on some music as you're walking. I and I mean just to get away from the market but also just like to clear your head because I think people are finding reasons to be upset with life and it's like it's not just do to just go do something else. For those of you not looking at the screen in one of the most popular news stories of the day. Actually, it's, it's just as popular as the actual price news. I only have two tabs here, but here we go. For those of you not looking at the screen, uh, David Bowie's estate is going to be releasing NFTs in his image. I believe that there are going to be nine different versions of the David Bowie NFTs, and you can buy them all if you want. Sure. So... I was looking around as to what the news actually was because every single website kept on saying uh, his NFTs received backlash. Not all his fans were happy. Some of his fans are fretting at the idea of an NFT with David Bowie on it. And I was like, oh boy, I wonder what the actual problem was. Um, he, <laughs> you guys want to know the problem? Any, anybody want to know the problem? The problem is, air quotes, is that the NFTs um, aren't the type of tribute that his fans want for him. No, there was nothing else after that. I paused because that was it. His fans simply did not want uh, a digital representation of something. And that's why they're upset. Even crazier... I, I, I believe it's maybe on, on this one. Right. Um, so and he, he, here's, here's the part that I knew that people are nonsensical and need to go somewhere. 100%. One, zero, zero, percent. Of the money made is going to charity to fight world hunger and poverty. I'm going to repeat that one more time. His family is not creating these NFTs to fill their pockets because they're already extremely wealthy. They made these NFTs because David Bowie, I don't know the guy personally, was allegedly a very good person and they want 100% of the proceeds to go to a charity that is fighting world hunger and poverty. If you have a problem with a family creating something where 100% of the proceeds are going to help people who are less fortunate than you are? I was going to say something, but I'll just go say get a life. This was, on top of the price news, the most popular news story of the day. I'm, and I'll apologize for them. I'm sincerely sorry that the Bowie family did not create a representation of David Bowie that makes you happy. I'm, I'm sincerely apologizing for the fact that your life is so ridiculous that you actually complained on Twitter for hours about something that you don't have to buy. You, you can buy one of his old albums. You can, I think you can buy some of his art through Sotheby's or Christie's. No one's forcing you to buy this. No one's forcing you to even look at it. Isn't that crazy? Can you imagine that? No one's forcing you to buy this. This was the most popular news story of the day. Mixed reactions on Twitter. Who? It's, it's, it's kind of like when I say, you know, whenever Warren Buffett or Jamie Dimon or the gold guy, 
uh, always say something negative and I'm like, who cares? Because their opinion really doesn't matter. C can you imagine if I had listened to people who told me years ago that my voice was ridiculous, I should not have a cryptocurrency channel or simply get off of YouTube? Can you imagine if I had listened to them? Stop, stop worrying about what people, it's really, anyway, so yeah, um, I don't know the prices of these things, um, if I can, you know, anyway, um, that's the David Bowie's family estate is going to be launching NFTs in his honor and all of the money will be going to help people who have less money than the people who were complaining news. Imagine having nothing to do with your day except for complain on Twitter that a David Bowie NFT is not to your liking. Think about that. All right. That's a David. I, I, I hope they raise millions of dollars. And I mean millions upon millions upon millions of dollars. Let's move on. Right, Tio. I do hope that you've all enjoyed my ranting. I'm I'm just tired of people. It's it's so it's so ridiculous. There was so much other. There was what was the other news story that I was going to put in here? I don't. It, it it was something. I don't remember. Anyway, doesn't really matter. It was it was something stupid that had to do with money and like privilege and stuff like that, and people not realizing their position on the planet. It's just very. GBU Wally. Manny Cryptos, Crypto Gambino, Bubble Mode, How's Life Austin, Auspicious Agile and Blockchain, Jamie Saad, Blockchain Simplified, and let's move on, Empire Queen, Roman Geba, Bitcoin Ben, Arachno Dave, Tony Ambrosky, The Dealer's Den, Captain Something in the Z-Way Lay, Mobarazzi, Vibiner 21, Miguel Grolay, Lauren De Silva, Quoted Biddy, Troy All Good, Space Case, Need a Miracle, Pater Noster, Navarro Williams, Utopia 569, Moon Man High, XRP, Martin Stoyo, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Animal Rita, Abiliophobia, Todd Mullis, Adam Graysick, Wise Knight, Owl 242 to the World, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Coldy 3D, Setsuna, Richie Rich the Third, Paxis, Nick Manji Alavori, Jim Gardner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Yes to Crypto, Bodie McBoatface, Anytime Fitness, Monks, Corner Staff, Bake Me a Cake, Tigara Machonisa, On Crypto with Lionel, and Crayola Michelle URL. Thank you all very, very much for your support. <laughs> I don't know why I said it that way. Thank you all very much for all your likes, comments, and subscriptions, all the support on the new channel. Do appreciate it. There's a new video dropping today as well. Yeah, at the moment, Bitcoin is currently at $18,806. We are $1,200, I believe it is. Down from where we were yesterday, Bitcoin's down by 5.5%. Ethereum is at 1,534. It is down by 8.36%. I think we were just here anyway. I'm pretty sure we were just at $1,500 like a week and a half ago. So, I mean, no real loss. Kind of just erase the gains uh, from whence we came. Binance Coin is down by 5.6%. Uh, someone was asking me, I think on Twitter or somewhere, if I was accumulating Binance Coin. No. I I think that here's my opinion. This is not financial advice. I think the coin has a bright future ahead of it because Binance is simply doing everything all over the place at one time. If you've never seen that movie, go watch it. It's called Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. I mean, fantastic. Not even good. The movie is absolutely fantastic. Uh, but I just don't feel like it's the coin for me. I feel like there are many other coins where I could make a lot more profit. Uh, not to say that I could not profit from Binance coin, but I'd rather buy some of the other coins that I've been talking about, like ABA. ABA, wow. Like ADA or whatever else I'm also buying out there. Speaking of Cardano, is down by 7%. XRP is down by 3 Solana is down by 5 Doge is down by 6 I think nothing is really... One coin, Leo said Unis Leo is up by 4%. It has $2 million trading volume, so it's very easy to move the coin up in that way. Everything else is down. Yep, everything else is down. We'll see what happens as the day goes on. I, once again, have little hope. I assume that the stock market is going to continue falling just based off of a generalized fear that someone's going to stand at a podium... What a weird world we live in. I'm I'm terrified of aliens coming here and being like, show us your society. And then they quickly leave because none of it makes any sense. It's just 
so counterintuitive to every single thing. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, great morning, great afternoon, great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely incredible. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, supporting, watching, or listening. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you!